What's goody? Welcome to Easy React, baby. It's your humble and gracious host, Easy. Right now, we're about to react to the odd ones out. Let's get right to the video. Goody number five. You might be thinking that me giving you advice on pitching a show is insincere or not applicable because of that. <laughs> but listen, there was still- No, you listen. We're not all famous YouTubers. I'm sorry, brother. We wish we could get like you. I came into Netflix Studios and I'm like, hey, man, listen, I got- 18 million subscribers on YouTube, I think I get a show. A whole lot of work that went into my pitch for a TV show, and even with all my subscribers, statistically, I still got turned down way more times than I got picked up. Wow. If Netflix is just green lighting everyone with a big sub count, then why doesn't I did a thing have a show, huh? Dude, yo. <laughs> My man, you are sick, bro. Yo, you're still hurt and it's okay. Like, it's okay. <laughs> I know he beat you up, but it's cool, man. We can move on. Why doesn't Mr. Beast have a Netflix show? Oh, That's a fact, actually. Mr. Beast actually got, like, rejected multiple times by, by Netflix executives and he just moved on. Because, like, he doesn't need them. Actually, he's he's doing just fine. Don't By the way, if you are someone with a lot of subscribers, don't just walk into a studio and say, Hey, I have a lot of subs. Give me a show, okay? I feel like that's all you really need to do. That's what I would have done. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, trust me. They didn't see an idea. They didn't see a plan. They didn't see everything. And say, Hey, I have a lot of subs and free merchandise for you, okay? Diversification is key. Very important. Like, if you don't come in with a free merch, I don't think you're gonna get the deal. Like, duh, like, come on. <laughs> what are we talking about here? But, <laughs> yo, honestly, if you came in and gave me free stuff, I'll be like, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> Networks like Netflix, Cartoon Network, and Nickelodeon, they're in the biz of making content for their platform Facts. and in turn getting you, the viewer, to watch said content on said platform, Facts. thus generating a perpetual money-making cycle that everyone, including you, benefits from. Facts. You're benefiting from the entertainment and they're benefiting through the monetary compensation. Now, the executives in charge don't have all the time to come up with every single show they're going to make. Facts. So, they turn to the general public, open their doors, and will listen to anyone pitch them their idea for a television series. But even if you have an Emmy-winning idea, if you're not able to properly sell your idea and win over the hearts of the network executives, it's not going to get picked up and developed. That is very true. Now, these Netflix executives are cutthroat. They think they know everything but they clearly don't. Then your only option is to independently fund and develop your idea yourself. But what kind of a loser would do that? <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of loser would do such a thing? <laughs> <sighs> and thus the art of pitching a show is born. You could honestly teach a whole class about this. Now, obviously you can't just walk into a studio empty-handed. All right. Big idea. <laughs> what if we do a show where there's a talking alligator, right? And he's like, yo, what? I'm a crocodile. You got <laughs> That sounds fire. <laughs> I would have picked that shot up immediately. Let's let's be honest here, bro. I would have picked it up. Gotta come prepared, but also not be over prepared. Facts. I was actually because okay, I'll give you guys a little insider. These executives they will look at your idea and they'll be like, um, <clears throat> this is cool and all, but I want to change everything. Like literally from the beginning to the end, I want to change it all and then put my name on it and then remove your name and then make it seem like it never existed. And then we'll call it what I want to call it. <laughs> We're just going to put you on the credits so we get more buzz and we get more views. That's how, it, that's how it goes, man. Surprised to learn this, but going into the pitch room with finished scripts, turnarounds of your nice. characters and plushies will actually hurt your chances of getting picked up. Up. The reason for this is because executives will sometimes like to change parts of your show, and if you already have all the characters and story mapped out, they'll not want to pick you up because they feel like they can't change anything. You're not even supposed to write any scripts until after you get the green light because the executives have to approve all the scripts you make and the writers that you want to hire. So if you ever pitch a show, just be open for changes. Which, I can attest, is a very different experience to what it's like on YouTube. What you Yeah, because on YouTube, you're your own creative director. Your idea goes. It's a lot of work, but James has a team behind him, and that's why it's able to happen. But James is the creative director. Whatever James says goes, right? But when you're working with these Netflix executives, nah, nah, nah. They're the creative director. Whatever they say goes. And some people are not used to that, especially when they've had creative control their entire life. 
And I feel like James is probably going to go a little bit more in detail for that, but that's the big difference you guys got to understand. What you want to bring to the pitch is this super important document called a show Bible. Ooh. And then you need to convert to that show's religion. Mm. The show Bible is a document that contains everything your audience needs to know about your show. In the beginning of a show Bible, there should be a one to two sentence description that covers the main synopsis of your show. It's kind of like an elevator pitch, but here in the biz, we call it a log line. I'll give you mine as an example. <sighs> when James's parents move them to a tiny desert town where eccentric scientific minds have been brought together to do unfretted experiments, James finds himself surrounded by the children of these scientists and the offspring of their experiments. The result? Unlike in his last town, James is no longer the oddest kid around. I don't know if- Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful log line. James. I know this must have took you like months and months to like put it all together. So, hey man, I suggest everyone go check it out. It's a beautiful work of art. Show's been out by the time this video comes out, but we kind of lost the new in town theme. Like I said, the executives want to make changes. <laughs> After the log line, you write a page long backstory where you go more in depth with your idea. Answer questions like, who are the characters? What are their goals? Where do they live? Just general stuff, because after the backstory page, you're gonna write all about your characters. This is the part of the Bible where you can just go balls to the wall with details and description. Who, how, and why are your characters? What are their wants, needs, fears, flaws, likes, dislikes, and general personality traits? These are important traits to think about even if a specific detail isn't going to be reflected in the show. Like in my Bible for the crocodile, Max, some of the things we said he liked were the rain, raw chicken, and laying on warm rocks in the sun. Now, I don't think you got to enjoy a single one of those things in the show, but these are the types of questions you have to answer to get the clearest idea of who your characters are. So I'm guessing James, like, came up to the execs and said, hey, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm getting from this so far. And they were like, yeah, that's cute and all, but <laughs> we just want your name, sonny. <laughs> you should also include drawings of your characters. This can help show their personality and body language, but just keep them to doodles, because again, be hope they can be they're subjected to change. Mm -hmm. Next, there needs to be drawings and descriptions of specific locations that the characters spend a lot of time in. This will help show the overall world and tone of the show. And lastly, I know it's long, that's why it's called a show bible and not a show pamphlet. You need to write out page-long episode ideas, not scripts. This will show the executives what a typical episode would look like and the direction and tone you want to go with the show. <laughs> Honestly, there's so much that goes into a show bible. I'm really only scratching the surface. If you are genuinely interested in pitching a show, or even a little interested in cartoons, then I would highly recommend looking at other show bibles online for inspiration and how they should be formatted. For all my animators and for all my people who are very interested in the creative arts, you guys better be listening. Like my man's James is giving us the blueprint. Is basically telling us how he make it into a Netflix series. Like that's big. You guys don't understand how big this is. So shout out James for like giving us the ins and outs of how he was able to make this happen. It's pretty fun looking through older show Bibles and seeing the earliest versions of your favorite cartoons. Mm -hmm. This is what Mermaid Man and Barnacle Bill were going to look like. <laughs> I mean, look, 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 isn't that cool? Unfortunately, you can't just hand an executive your show Bible and silently wait for them to finish reading it. You also have to energetically and flawlessly pitch your show. Mm -hmm. Executives listen to like, nine pitches a day. So if you're not selling your show with 110% enthusiasm, they're gonna pass right over you. So you have to practice your pitch like your paycheck depends on it. <laughs> Me and the showrunner I worked with, Ethan Banville, practiced our pitch so many times. We practiced in front of a mirror to our family members. We filmed our- And that's what you really gotta do too. Like that's what I did for like college presentations. I was practicing and then watched the footage, gave each other notes and then burned the evidence. <laughs> we memorized our whole Bible, wow. but despite everything, the first time we pitched, I was still nervous. I had no- No matter how prepared you are to do anything in life, if you're not nervous, when the big stage comes, you're not human. Or you just don't care as much as you thought you did. No idea what pitching a show would be like. We brought in our stapled Bible that we typed out on Microsoft Word, and I thought, this isn't enough. 
This Bible doesn't even have a spine. I still thought we needed to bring in finished scripts and character designs to show the executives how much thought we put into the show. But Ethan reassured me, no, no, the executives don't want to be overwhelmed with content. But when we got to the lobby, I saw the group ahead of us pitching their show, and they had cardboard cutouts of their characters, and they were handing the executives custom plushies. But that's why they didn't get picked up. And you know it too, James. But I know how it is when you see someone doing something, oh my god, we're supposed to do that too? But trust me, you're, you're fine. And I turned to Ethan, we are so underprepared. <laughs> when we got inside, we pitched the show just like we practiced a thousand times. And then the executive told me that no studio would ever want to work with a YouTuber. These execs don't know anything, bro. They don't know anything. The fact that he's a YouTuber, doesn't that mean he's valid proof that the concept works? What are these execs talking about? Yo, these execs really make me mad. The fact that he's a YouTuber, the fact that he has gathered an audience that's able to understand and appreciate his work of art, and you're telling me that's the reason he's disqualified for getting a show on your platform? What are you talking about? Yeah, sometimes they don't even wait to tell you in an email that they're going to pass. Great. Sometimes they just get it over with right then and there. So, you know, not the best confidence boost for your first pitch. But we kept on pitching, and we kept hearing a lot of no's, and if you ever pitch, get ready to hear that response. Everyone in Hollywood has a story of being turned down by everyone. I want to bring a perfect example. Quick Games is like the number one Netflix show. It was worldwide, critically acclaimed show right on Netflix like it literally boosted Netflix stock Netflix was about to die then squid games really brought them out of the water that same dude wanted to do that show for a very long amount of years like 10 or 20 years or something like that he's had that idea, that idea for that long he was told no so many times any other man would have quit but he decided not to if you feel that you have an idea or a vision that is going to change your life no matter how many times you get told no, no matter how many trials and tribulations you go through, do not stop. Keep chasing that dream and I promise you, it doesn't matter how long it'll take, but if you do not stop chasing your dream, you will see the fruits of your labor. Finding the right home for their idea. And sometimes really talented people work for years on an idea and it goes nowhere. So the fact that I was even able to make something and it didn't get canceled, I'm incredibly grateful for. Fact. But getting a show green lit is not the only way to get it made. You can always put in the work and develop something yourself. Andrew Schultz did the same thing. Andrew Schultz was told by the Netflix executives, they, were, they told him, hey man, uh, we want to cut out some parts. But he's like, no, this is my original work. I know that this is what the audience wants to see. So I do not want to cut it out. And because of that, because he took that chance, he released it himself. And it, he made three times the amount of money he would have made with the Netflix executives. So I'm telling you, if you truly believe in your idea and you know your vision is the right vision, take a chance. Put it out yourself. No, you won't have a network backing you with tons of money. Mm -hmm. But if you truly believe in your idea, you should at least put something out for the world to see nice. and over time build your own audience. And then, who knows? Maybe even sell it to a network. Mm -hmm. But not the one who said they never work with a YouTuber. They're, they're horrible. <sighs> okay, that's all the time I got. I gotta get back to watching Oddball streaming October 7th on my Netflix. As always, the humble and gracious host, Easy. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I love you guys. Peace.